Wikimedia Foundation, where he conducts foundational research and develops new AI technologies. And the discussion will be led by Ellen Yelena Simple, who is a professor of computer science at King's College London, and who is also the current president of the Semantic Web Science Association. So with that, uh, Elena, over to you. Thank you. Um, I mean, those of uh, you who have happened to attend a conference with me, maybe pre-COVID times, know that I'm a big fan of karaoke. So going back to singing, be care really be careful of what you wish for. <laughs> um, well, uh, welcome also from my side. Um, I guess um, we all agree that we do live in interesting times. <laughs> Um, and artificial intelligence, essentially a set of technology that has been making in the last for more than 50 years, has now reached what some people call its iPhone moment. Um, so ChatGPT is almost a verb. And essentially, people in all walks of life are becoming more and more aware of what this AI can and cannot do. Organizations and, 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 and entire professions are reflecting what this disruption means to them and their futures, and governments are considering regulation. And since November last year, I hope you agree with me that we are once again moving really, really fast, and we're almost certainly going to break some things along the way. Um, Thank you. My name is Elena Simpel. Um, I'm a professor of computer science at King's College. I'm also the director of research at the Open Data Institute in, in, in the UK. Um, and I am an AI scientist who hopes to help build a better Wikidata ecosystem. So that's my, my link to this community. Um, and before I say a few words, um, my personal introductions to my to, to the panelists, let me just tell you, I started out as a researcher around the same time as, as Wikipedia was launched. Um, and as someone working in AI, I really just want to do my bit to make sure that the, you know, the technology will benefit uh, the Wikipedia community and the society as large. So when I was asked to moderate this panel, I, I, I couldn't possibly say no. Um, and I'm even happier to and humbled to uh, welcome our two fabulous guests. And they're fabulous for various reasons. For me, they're fabulous because they've worked across disciplines. I'm a fan of uh, some of the things that they've done, uh, like a real fan, and, and, and because they've contributed, both of them, to open source development. And um, say, so you've heard the introduction. Uh, Thomas is a co-founder of Hugging Face. Um, where he's working in open source and science teams. You may have used the Transformers library. Um, you may have also heard about the data sets library. Say for someone like me who works in data set discovery and open data, um, those 33,000 uh, data set make me really excited. And then Isaac, a uh, research scientist at the Wikimedia Foundation since 2018. Amazing credentials. I'm a big fan of your uh, FACT 2022 paper on data governance and AI, and also the work on, on quantifying the value of Wikipedia. So very happy that you could make it. Um, so I'm going to ask you to start with your opening systems, uh, systems, statements. You can't take the engineer out of the woman. Um, so five minutes opening statements, um, with or without slides, as you please. Um, and we start with Isaac, shall we do that? Sure, sure, happy to. Um, so yeah, I also enjoy karaoke, uh, but I will, I will uh, save folks from having to hear all of that. Um, thank you, Elena, I'm very excited to be here. This may be a few things about my kind of personal interest and maybe some context to help set the stage. Um, so personal interest, as you highlighted, uh, I've been developing kind of AI tools for Wikimedians for the past couple of years, been a research scientist with the Wikimedia Foundation. So that informs a lot of my thinking and, and going through those processes and learning about how to do that in a very wiki way. Um, so I'm bringing that to, to the panel. And as um, you and actually any earlier in a breakout session earlier reminded me, I have a research background around reuse of Wikimedia content. Um, so understanding how Wikimedia content shows up outside the Wikimedia ecosystem and what impact that has, which obviously has a lot of overlap with a lot of the conversations that are going on around AI. Um, 
And then I think more recently, too, I've been involved as, you know, part of this kind of inflection point um, of really focusing in on this ethical AI, what is our um, approach here, and really trying to think about what that should look like within the Wikimedia ecosystem. So I've been doing a lot of kind of thinking there. And so in that sense, I'm very excited to be on the panel to hear Thomas's perspectives, to hear the questions from the audience, to really get to talk through these things. That's always valuable. Um, Two pieces of context, maybe, and then I'll, I'll pass on to Thomas. Um, the first one, I, you know, you said, as you pointed out, kind of a inflection point right now around AI. Um, and the other piece I'll say is it's also part of a larger history, and I think that's really important to keep in mind um, internally. And this has come up within a number of sessions today already. Um, there's been a long history of bots, um, kind of constrained AI-assisted editing on the platform around, you know, uh, content translation, vandalism detection, a whole whole swat of things. Um, and so, you know, so that's exciting. That's there's a lot of things from that that we can learn from. And I think externally as well, right? There's a lot of similarities between the questions we're asking about the impact of AI and, you know, so, some of the discussions that went on around uh, search engine usage of Wikipedia and what that meant for the Wikimedia projects. Um, so in that sense, I'm going to try to be like maximally boring in many ways. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, this isn't that new. Like, um, so I think there's that piece of context. And the other thing I think that's important to bring up is that while we're still, I think, trying to figure out what Wikimedia's role will be in this kind of new AI ecosystem. It is a unique one, um, which is exciting. I think we uh, stand at this interesting balance between an organization and community that thinks a lot and does a lot of really hard work around doing things ethically um, and having good process and doing things openly. Um, but we're also a community that builds things and produces content. And so we don't, you know, we really have to, um, you know, put the rubber to the road. We have to build things and we have to progress. And so that's also an interesting kind of space that we fill um, that, you know, isn't necessarily true of, of others. Um, so I think that's another interesting piece of context. But with that, um, I'll pass it off to Thomas. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. And I think I've heard stats that 3% of uh, the data set for, of Chad GBT, the initial release, was, was, was Wikipedia. Um, Thomas, over to you. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Um, I'm also I'm also very very happy to be here today. So maybe at the difference of Isaac, I'm really here to to learn a lot. I think so. I'll be very happy to to hear your your boring uh, history because obviously, uh, I mean, I've been using Wikipedia right like everyone, but I I, I don't know all, all the all the history. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of things that are probably just repeating in a slightly different way right today. Um, so, so we also almost co-author co with uh, Isaac because the, the, the data governance paper was, was kind of one of these things that, that spun out of the, the Big Science and the Bloom project uh, and Yassine in particular at Hagi Face was, was really uh, focused on, and did a, a really amazing work here. Uh, it would be much more relevant uh, than me as a panelist, but maybe it's also nice that I bring a different uh, perspective, slightly different, so somebody a bit outside. Um, I, th I think... Um, just like uh, the Wikipedia project, maybe one, one specificity of Huggy Face on our work, uh, if I compare to, to many, many other people developing AI, is that we, we've tried to have a big sense of the community uh, and maybe uh, the difference from some other, we, we are maybe more interested in the journey that we are taking towards, you know, this uh, more powerful AI uh, tools rather than just the end product. So uh, what I personally would like to see is, uh, well, it's quite exciting. It's also hard to deny that this new product, they, they, these new tools, they can do things that we would have never really uh, thought possible, right, a couple of years ago. But um, I think it would be really great if on the way to developing this tool, we keep having um, as many stakeholders as possible involved in this process. And we kind of keep uh, building them as a community and not just a little bit like, you know, I, islands of, of people uh, kind of isolated from each other, which is a, a bit what I'm worried is starting to, to happen here. So, um, yeah, I think I, I try to, or at least I had the face, we try to navigate the, the thin line between uh, staying rather positive on the outcome of this technology and not putting kind of a blanket ban on it and trying to see, okay, now how can we, 
um, maybe nudge it in the direction that's the most responsible? How can we find the right incentives in the community to make them do things that we uh, that we feel are more responsible? And today, really, a lot of this um, gravitates around uh, the data, the training data, or the data we send at inference. How do we use that? How do we how do we find a way that you know we don't have this disconnect between uh, like knowledge creators and knowledge users. I was actually here talking about that today as well with, with many other people. And I think this kind of like having this technology that's that would be more like a link between people who create knowledge and people who consume or read it rather than just this kind of wall that we have right now, you know, knowledge enter, disappear, and then we have someone at the other side who use that would be really, really amazing. Um, yeah, so so we, we stand a bit on this on this uh, position and uh, trying to uh, both create collaborative projects and at the same time uh, trying to also you know uh, find a way to build thing and not just kind of say you should not build any any model. So so that's that's basically where we try to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, say and before I start asking some questions. Uh, Bob has asked me to do one thing and I have forgotten, and that is to make you aware that there is a Google document, which he has posted in the chat, where you could um, add your questions. Um, so we're going to start with some, some um, questions uh, that we came up with, um, and then we're going to move over to, to the questions you have. So I'm sure with such a topic, uh, there will be some. Um, and while you do that, um, I'd like to ask both of you to unpack this um, relationship between AI, machine learning in particular, as a, as a set of technologies, um, and as a community and ecosystem, and, and, and Wikipedia. So, so how do you see that, that relationship? Where are potential tension points, where are overlaps or, or, or commonalities or things to learn from each other? Who would want to go first? Thomas, would you like to go first? Yeah, I can, I can go first because, you know, just, just like Wikipedia has a long history of uh, having to deal with, with both and AI also has a very long history of, uh, of uh, you know, relying on Wikipedia, in particular NLP, it has always mm -hmm. been seen as the, the source of truth and if we need a source of knowledge, mm -hmm. it always uh, turns to, to Wikipedia as the, the data sets. In every training of large language model, if there is one data set that people will reiterate and do like 10 epochs on each on it instead of just a half uh, half of an epoch, that's always Wikipedia. It's always up sample in every training data set. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, a nice token of recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, what I think we, we lose a lot, well, Wikipedia is actually one source, but even the edits have been used a lot in terms of like, you know, training model to correct uh, mistakes or like to, so every every part of Wikipedia, I think almost has been used mm -hmm. in one way or another in an AI model. Mm -hmm. uh, something we lose, uh, at least up to now, we lose a lot is all the interesting context that you see in the discussion pages, the talk pages. You have, you know, uh, in particular when uh, some articles are maybe a bit more, uh, hot or debated, it's very interesting to go there and look at that. Uh, and that's definitely something you, you lose a lot. This is one aspect, all the discussion around this uh, knowledge creation. Mm -hmm. and second aspect that we lose is obviously also kind of crediting in Wikipedia. You can look at who wrote which part, and that's also mm -hmm. something that we lose. So um, I would say up to now, AI has been uh, kind of a small, um, Parasites on top of the big elephant Wikipedia, uh, which is interesting, is that this kind of start to uh, like reverse. Now we have this huge AI elephant on the top of this uh, small um, <laughs> Wikipedia uh, part. And how can we how can we manage to to make the two maybe on equal footing? Um, mm -hmm. As the part I'm, I'm most interesting, and obviously the second part, but I think we we go there later is. Uh, in the creation of Wikipedia itself, should you use AI, how to use it? And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Isaac, how about, how about you? Having been part of this ecosystem for so long, where do you see those, those relationships? So Thomas talked about source of data 
for, for, for AI and the, the, the balance of, of power and perhaps popularity and public awareness. How do you see this relationship? Yeah, building on what Thomas was saying, and definitely it's a fluid relationship and one more still, I think, trying to figure out what the current state of it is. Um, I do think, you know, Wikipedia, this like now that AI maybe is a little more salient or prominent, Wikipedia is still quite, quite important in this in this world, you know, as a source of reliable knowledge. Um, and so I don't think that it's, Wikipedia is less important, um, but maybe an example um, to follow through on my commitment to, to bring lots of historical examples. Um, an example around kind of uh, how this relationship can be good and or, or bad. And I think um, a good example of that is with uh, machine translation and its use on the, on the projects a number of years ago um, when that was kind of formalized into a tool, um, content translation on the project, the state of kind of AI in that space was still relatively rough. So you had a lot of kind of rule-based systems, um, and there was some open source projects in that domain, uh, but the performance wasn't great. Um, and then I think, you know, uh, in the late 2010s, Google really, uh, brought kind of the neural machine translation. You saw this big advance in, in capabilities, um, which was, it was good for the Wikimedia projects. They were able to, uh, set up partnerships to take advantage of those APIs, but it was kind of a um, like a static relationship in some ways. The team was able, um, who kind of set this up, was able to set it up so that the data that came out of these translations um, and the work that the editors were doing was publicly available, which is good. It allowed, you know, other kind of um, machine translation systems to learn from the work that Wikimedians were still doing, um, but these were you know, tended to be kind of closed models, proprietary model, models. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's only in the last year or two that we now see some really um, like performative open models. The one that um, has been used at the Wikimedia Foundation is this no language left behind model um, from Meta, which is an open source model. Um, and now that's really exciting. That opens up a lot of possibilities on the projects. Um, they're no longer constrained to just this like, well, help in like article editing, but you can imagine many more uses for machine translation. And because it's an open model, um, there's a lot more opportunities now for kind of building on that work and um, having kind of the work that Wikimedians are doing going back. So I think it's gone from this, um, you know, like, the performance was maybe good, but the ecosystem and the relationships weren't great to now, you know, having this more open model, we're in a place where you can start to see, okay, now we can like, we have a better kind of structural ecosystem in place around this technology, um, where Wikimedians can contribute, other, you know, open source advocates can contribute. Um, and so I think that's maybe a, uh, a note of optimism around that. Great, thank you so much. And and I'm just looking at the time and I had seven questions and I, I have, I think, um, 15 minutes left. So I'm going to keep you on your toes and ju just change the order of the questions a little bit. So, um, so Thomas, you said that um, Wikipedia is very valuable um, for, for, for machine learning. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what could AI and the AI community give back? What could they do for Wikipedia, for their ecosystem, um, and, and, and for the community of editors and community managers and researchers who have helped build it and improve it in the last 20 or so years? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, honestly, I'm also here to, to hear about what people think because uh, it's I think it's really, uh, we're in open territory right today. Like I think nobody really has a very clear idea, but th there is many interesting things. So it can start from like simple tools, maybe what you know other people are doing, which is start using maybe this this model as a way to a to help for moderation or this kind of uh, editing and kind of community uh, part. But you can also imagine. Uh, maybe interesting things, right? So, so let me just maybe draw one that we're thinking just now, which is like when you're when you're on a, one article, uh, you're reading, you're trying to understand it. You, you could also have, you know, some kind of AI that uh, that's that's kind of there that you can talk to, uh, which is also you know reading the same article, some kind of dialogue. And if you have like uh, 
enough reasoning, enough you know knowledge in this AI that could be kind of a, a page specific tutor that would basically use uh, the, the knowledge here and can help you maybe uh, reformulate maybe one paragraph that I don't know it's difficult to understand and you can say hey, can can you explain this and this so this type of thing where uh, instead of having somehow static pages. Mm -hmm. uh, Wikipedia page could be maybe the beginning of a dialogue or something where you can explain, you know, ask ask more more question. I think okay. a lot of Wikipedia is great around the dialogue around uh, for the dialogue around data creation. Uh, mm -hmm. like I was talking the the talk pages, but sometimes mm -hmm. you also need to talk about pages to understand it. So mm -hmm. so that would be the type of thing I would see in the future where we have this. If we start to have these AI things a bit everywhere, basically you could uh, you could discuss um in detail mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's that that's very interesting and and i'm sure people here in 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 the zoom call uh but also the rest of the community have um many views around how having such a tool would 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 change things um not just in terms of readership and access but also in terms perhaps of engagement with the content and and editing and quality checks and and all the, the the practices that are that are available so so do you um comment on this or or, or ask follow-up questions if you want in, in 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 the document um Leila has just posted the, the the link again in in the chat um so possibly ways to 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 access and engage with with Wikipedia content through 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 AI, um, Isaac Thomas said earlier that Wikipedia is the source of truth. Now you mentioned the World of Reliable as well. Um, so um, I'm going to ask you um, something uh, perhaps a bit controversial. Um, so there's lots of concerns in 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 some parts of the community around um, and the potential of generative AI models to create or cause a new wave of misinformation at the scale that we haven't potentially seen before. So does that mean that Wikipedia will soon be obsolete or outdated? And not just Wikipedia, also other open source public good initiatives that, that we hold dear. What are your views on this? Definitely not obsolete. Um, maybe trying to like pick apart pieces of that. Um, so I think there's there's one piece, and I think this is a, um, when people think about Wikipedia, we think a lot about kind of the content generation side. So like you know the articles, and and that's the piece that most readers see. But there's really a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, that is like the work that keeps Wikipedia reliable and also keeps it to expanding to kind of new knowledge areas. So you know things like um, doing the fact checking work and the, doing the maintenance of that content. Um, but also like the discussions, and you know, as Thomas has been saying about the talk pages, these discussions around, is this a reliable source? Like, how do we want to um, talk about these sorts of issues that are things that, um, you know, AI is kind of a reflection of what, where we're already at, can't can't necessarily have these sorts of discussions. Um, and then like, for instance, I was in a uh, developer track earlier about OCR for Wikisource. I think that's a great example of that sources of knowledge that aren't accessible to AI right now. Um, and so like, you know, the Wikimedia community is doing a lot of really hard work though to digitize those sorts of manuscripts and, um, and make them more accessible to folks. And that's work that you can't really replace right now. Um, and I think the other piece of that too is the like uh, Wikipedia. And I think we often think about that as kind of an English Wikipedia thing. So um, I was just reading the, um, what the Google did their whole unveiling today and they uh -huh. you know, with Pong. Um, and I think they're really saying it right now it's like two to three languages and aiming for 40. And, you know, Wikipedia, we're working with over 300, right? Um, and so uh -huh. like, uh, yes, maybe there's places where AI can be pretty impactful on some of the projects, but there's a lot of projects where, it, you know, um, it's far, far behind um, in its ability to even kind of produce a facsimile of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and just as a follow-up question also to you, Isaac, um, should 
Wikipedia and Wikipedia editors use more or less AI and what for? I think I'm pretty agnostic to that. You know, I uh, you kind of mentioned AI like scales things up. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's like, well, where, you know, what are the goals of Wikimedians? Um, things like, you know, increasing the diversity of the community um, or like just removing barriers to being able to contribute. And so where AI can help with those things, I think that's that's a good thing. And I think the community reflects that in their own kind of discussions of, you know, these tools aren't inherently good or bad. It's just, you know, are they helping us to serve our goals that we've for a long time had or not? And that's really the kind of question that we should be asking. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am going to mix things up a little bit because I have seen a related question in the document. Um, say um, the question is um, from an anonymous member of the public. What implications do the new AI advances have for content creation Wikipedia, specifically this scenario where articles can be produced with just the prompt? How can Wikipedia address this? Who wants to take this? So shall we prompt models to write Wikipedia articles? Thomas, what do you think? It's <laughs> a good question, yeah. Well, I guess th this will probably be, you know, just like, uh, you know, just like in the past, probably where, where people were probably, uh, I mean, there are, it's like probably no, and I would be happy to hear. Basically, I, gu I guess there have always been cases of people, you know, creating a lot of content and pushing a lot of content in a kind of semi automated way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think... Honestly, like using a prompt to do a first draft of an article that you want to spend time editing, that's totally fine, right? But what we probably want to avoid is this type of, you know, automatically uh, non-read content that's just uploaded there. And mm -hmm. probably there are, there is not so much difference with what I guess has already been, been the case in the past, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm going to ask both of you, you say, um, how advanced is our knowledge of... of um prompting for the specific task of writing Wikipedia articles, which have a certain structure and they need to have references and so on. So, so, so are there, so I know in some fields, there's entire websites selling prompts or, or sharing prompts. Are we this far with Wikipedia? Does any of you know? Just on this, we, we can maybe dive a little bit bigger, deeper, right? So what happens basically if you, if you, if you, if you prompt a, a recent language model uh, and you try to make it write something. So, so either you get basically Wikipedia out uh, from the training data, yeah. which in the end is fine, but that's kind of circular. So probably that's just something that's there. Or, or you get some knowledge from other sources. Um, and then there is this interesting thing that you, that you will want to have like citation. You will want to have links to, to these other sources. Uh, but at face value, that's still nice to bring more knowledge, I would say, in Wikipedia, but you need to link this back, you know, to, to you have this problem of you, you cannot just write again this like physics book, you will need to link to it at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. I thought you were, uh, it's, you sounded like you, you, you were wrapping up. So I was just about to ask Isaac for, for his view. Yeah, I think Thomas is spot on and just the addition of, you know, um, the model only ha can only produce like what sources it has access to. So, right, like, it, you know, uh, sources on the web, things like that. And so just going back to that point of, you know, that's going to largely right now mean English language sources. Um, obviously, it means purely digit, you know, already digitized sources. Um, Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of these articles really, you know, you, folks are going into books, they're going into history archives um, and finding this content and bringing it up. So. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going to take the opportunity because we're talking about this um, to ask a question that Pablo asked, or maybe Pablo, you want to ask it yourself. It was a question about circular content creation and, and knowledge integrity. No? I, I can try. I cannot yeah, do this. Okay, go ahead. I think it's oh, very no. related to what we've just discussed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was just asking, like, if large language models are using Wikipedia for training data, and at the same time, these large language models, they will start at some point to be used to create content on Wikipedia. Uh, is it possible that we will be under the risk 
in the space of knowledge integrity of suffering from circular reporting from AI. So that these models are trained by data that they also created and that affect fact, uh, factual information in our knowledge spaces. So what are the implications? Knowledge integrity, uh, potentially something else. Isaac, I'm gonna start with you. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. Um, and I think, again, this is like, you know, an AI scaling up things. These aren't new concerns for the community. Um, and they have an absolutely fascinating uh, set of like discussions around kind of what sources are reliable. And I've even seen, I know in recent months, discussions about like, hey, the uh, FYI, like, the, you know, uh, was it no, I shouldn't say because I'm going to get the uh, publication wrong, but there's a publication that started using AI generated uh, articles and immediately the community caught on to that and said, hey, uh, like, let's be aware, like, this is no longer maybe a reliable source in this domain. Mm -hmm. And so I put a lot of trust in the community to kind of pay attention to these things um, and be able to update their guidelines for what they consider to be reliable and, and worth incorporating. Mm -hmm. Thomas, anything you'd want to add? Um, yeah, it's more of a meta, meta comments, but I think um, one thing I found very interesting in, in, in Wikimedia, Wikipedia is basically how the, the, the community that was created there is kind of healthy and striving over a long time. And I think that's a very great example for community that we probably would like to build as well, maybe more in AI or like in the AI research or practitioner. So. Uh, and, and it's a committee that's able to discuss complex topic around moral values, ethics, you know, this, this kind of very complex topic uh, that I would like to see discussed a lot more in AI because this AI, we put a lot of this uh, question in there. Mm -hmm. And so if we can find a way to copy that um, or like at least to take inspiration from the success here, that would be great. But here again, it's more like the AI feel taking inspiration for Wikipedia. I'm trying to think more about the other, the other direction. So, uh, Thank you. Um, moving back to, 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 to my um, questions that I was interested to, to, to ask. Um, so the next one is for both of you. Um, and the theme is, is the technology ready right now? Or could it do more harm than good? And what are some of the current risks and how do we manage them? And in particular, there is an ongoing debate in Wikipedia community, Wikimedia community, and elsewhere around implications and and um, for Wikipedia specifically, we're talking about issues with copyright. We're talking about the ability to to, to verify the, the the automatically generated content. We're talking, as in many areas, about hallucinations, um, and specifically also here about the neutral point of view and editor engagement. So, copyright. Very verifiability, hallucinations, neutral point of view, editor engagement. Pick one or pick all. Um, Isaac, shall we start with you? Sure. Um, yeah, so when I think about kind of this question of do more harm than good, I think one of the big ones that's come up in a lot of discussions, and I think about too, is the kind of attribution piece. And this gets back to what you're saying around copyright. And then certainly the kind of first wave of like, oh, let's get these models out there. Um, we're really bad at it. Um, and we're seeing advances now as um, I think some of the um, developers are taking this more seriously of like, uh, you know, making sure that when you build these tools around these large language models, there's an ability to reference your source material because, you know, that disintermediation, otherwise, you know, you getting back to the question about like, what is the relationship with AI and community and Wikipedia, right? It disintermediates that. Um, and so long-term is, is not a sustainable place to be if, if you can't provide the attribution back. So folks are aware how this knowledge is getting created, can go and, um, you know, edit it and those sorts of things. Um, so I think that's one that I, I think about a lot. Um, and I think the other thing, this is a because um, it came up in the came up in the initial introductions, the big science piece that Hugging Face ran. And one of the things I really liked about that, um, so big science, this big uh, consortium of folks who came together to try to build a large language model and do this um, carefully and do this with a lot of like, you know, ethical ethics in mind. Um, and one of the things, and I was part of the data governance side of this, and one of the things I really appreciated there was the care uh, at which that group both 
tried to expand to more languages, but also didn't do this with, you know, whatever data they could get their hands on. And they thought a lot about kind of privacy and how do we ensure that, you know, we're maintaining privacy as we expand these data sets, um, the governance of that data, like, you know, uh, making sure folks had the ability to, um, to contest what was in that data and things like that. And so I think the community, when I think about harm or good, um, I think a lot of that depends on uh, whether we see more things like big science is careful expansion into other languages to ensure that, you know, where there is benefits, they, they reach more people. Um, so. mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Dallas, how about, how about you? Um, so it was copyright, verifiability, hallucinations, neutral point of view and editor engagement as, as potential areas of concern. Yeah, yeah, no, I, th I think all, all these all these points make sense. Uh, these are all, all um, um, these are all aspects that you want to be careful about. Uh, I think it, it's great that there is a that there is already a large language model uh, guidance page around this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so maybe perhaps around hallucinations, there was a question also in the document. Thank you for that. Around the 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 technical background for that. So so many people share the views that hallucinations are are are, are a big concern. Um, how technically feasible do you think it is that we will um, improve um, large language models to hallucinate less? And what do we need to do to get there? If <laughs> Yeah, that's very tricky. A lot of people are, are trying to do that. It's difficult, uh, in, in part because it's it's not only trained on text on the internet that's always right, but it's all it's also trained on all these uh, parts which be, where people are just creating stuff, you know, like stories that we write, and blog posts where we invent stuff. And so basically, the model has a lot of difficulty uh, distinguishing what is you know just a story that's been written in a book and what is actually a real fact about the world. Uh, just like we do, huh? I think all along our entire life, we kind of build this kind of intuition of credibility of various sources. And even late in our life, we're still somehow surprises that oh, well, this actually is not credible at all. I thought it was kind of a good source. So, so the language model are a bit like this, and this this is very uh, difficult. So, one thing we rely a lot on in AI is actually labeling this as as human as like trustful sources or not. So. Um, so here we have these uh, dangerous circular references where if we label Wikipedia as trustful source, you should not use the hallucinated content in it. Um, but yeah, I think I think this this question of citation looking right that's a big that's a big problem. I think that's something people did not really anticipate it for large language model. The fact that mm -hmm. they produce text that really look very convincing uh, is really challenging our. Uh, intuition of what is yeah. good or not we have kind of this uh, very uh, deep intuition of like you know if, if if something is written in very good english that's a good sign uh, of like trustability or if you have a nice citation with nice number uh, nicely formatted you don't even need to click and all this reflects that we that we've uh, developed with the internet i think we may have to we may have to um, to change them this is this is a this is a big uh, a big problem. You have that in science. I mean, we've that we've had that for for some time, but not not at this at this point. I do agree. Yeah, with um, with that uh, for, for that uh, yeah, it's it's a big threat. In particular, where this citation and and that's question I have maybe for for uh, Wikipedia when you have a citation to you know something that's not really accessible or like the book that's uh, hard to get mm -hmm. hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be interested in diving on what are the ways that people kind of control and uh, this type of content. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does anyone want to comment on that? So is it about accessibility of citations? Um, completely unrelated to, to LLMs and automatically found or sourced references? Thomas said he's here to learn. <laughs> so we want to make sure that 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 happens um as well um there was bob you had an interesting question around hallucinations versus another evil 
would you like to ask it live? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was uh, kind of trying to play the devil's advocate a bit. What's uh -huh. We have a lot of pro trouble with va human vandals on Wikipedia, people that don't behave well. How much worse is a language model that potentially behaves well, but was even trained to behave well, and then sometimes it doesn't? We can look into, we can screw open the language model and probe it and look into its mind, if you will. We can't do that with a human. So I, I was curious about your, your reflections on that. Bad humans versus ill-behaving language models. I mean, I'll say maybe a few. Oh, go yeah. ahead, Thomas. I'll say a few things. Um, okay, go ahead. Some van so uh, there's like a common thing that uh, many folks start out editing Wikipedia as a vandal, like they, you know, they vandalize it and then they're kind of impressed with like, oh, hey, the community like fix this very quickly and, and um, actually begin to learn more than and, and contribute in positive ways. Um, so in that sense, I see maybe uh, uh, more hope in the vandal than in the language model where maybe you can kind of fix some of these things, but um, I don't know that it's ever going to become like a member of the community in the same way. Um, so I think there's maybe that that aspect of things. Um, and I think just, you know, what Thomas has said earlier about uh, with a lot of vandalism, there's a, it, it's often very clear it's vandalism. It doesn't make it easy to deal with necessarily, um, but it does, you know, uh, the AI models, there's this like patina, right, um, over top of it that can make it really hard to detect. And so in that way, I think it can create a lot more work for community members to constantly be um, alert to it and be fact checking every little piece because, um, yeah, just it's just a lot harder to use kind of basic heuristics to, to, to detect it. Thank you. Um, Thomas, did you want to add anything? Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe just one positive example as well could be that you know the, this model knowing how to, how to write you know good looking and, and easy to read English could still kind of help on this aspect. Maybe for like non speaker or non native speaker or trying to write a good article. And I think on this kind of tool editing, a bit like Grammarly, honestly, or like this type of tool editing and development of that, they, they could help making the contents more easy to ingest. So I, I could see some very practical use case where, where this will be nice. And if we can figure out in the very long term, like, you know, good, good LLM that have kind of a positive uh, and thoughtful mindset, you know, that participate in discussion, that, that could be also very interesting. But that's more future. It'd be interesting to, 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 to understand the impact on editor engagement. Uh, Leila, you had your hand up. Thank you for your patience. No, sure. I just wanted to go back to the question uh, Thomas had uh, just before this conversation yes. about uh, how we can probably learn from Wikipedia or what can Wikimedia do. And that was inspired by uh, Phoebe's question around hallucinated citations and references. Just want to call out that I think this is a place that, you know, Wikisource as a community and as a project can come to a good extent to rescue. Of course, uh, there are many things that Wikisource is limited um, by, for example, there's so much that the project can do with regards to uh, what is copyrighted material. However, Wikisource is a digital library. It's an open digital library, and it is, it is a project in which editors and contributors to the project try to bring more digital um, content available, and that can help uh, with uh, some of the discussions around what we can do about hallucinated citations and references and things that are currently not on the web accessible to be automatically checked, but they will be if uh, we support the Wikisource community more in their efforts. Thank you for that. Um, Leila, um, I'm gonna I'm going through well, I'm trying to multitask. Um, so I'm going through the questions. Um, there is a question which I think addresses something we, we haven't really touched upon. Um, how might existing biases, including gender biases, race biases, and so on, play out into large language models, given the connection between um, Wikipedia as a data source and, 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 and the technology? Um, and as a follow on, do you think human in the loop is a potential approach to avoid 
existing biases in, in, in the technology. Thomas, yeah, you seem... I can just say, yeah, it's very to... interesting. That's That just raised a lot of ideas, a lot of questions. Uh, you know, you could imagine, you know, to, that this large language model, is, instead of being this kind of huge black box, they could be a bit like Wikipedia. And when you have a debate on, you know, something they say, huh? you could actually have a discuss page on this topic and say, hey, actually, ChatGPT is saying that, but I don't agree. I don't think that's really... And then you have this discuss page around... And the, and, the, and the content of the large language model should be able to be updated. Uh -huh. That's one frustrating aspect of this. And that's a huge difference between this model and Wikipedia is that they are kind of static. While Wikipedia is this ever evolving thing, you know, that's kind of follow, you know, when there's new presidents, you know, everything changed when there's like a new, uh, um, something happening in the world, you have uh, already these pages and, and the model, they are just trained. A lot of them have been trained like three years ago and they are still mm. this language, with this kind of version of, of the knowledge. And so um, I think a future where there would be kind of a, a wiki GPT that you could edit would be would be interesting. But um, I'm just brainstorming in the open right now from this mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And, and um, Obviously, some of these systems, um, like ChatGPT, do learn as well from human feedback on the on the fly. Um, but but the data they've been trained off is 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 a bit older. Um, Isaac, any views from 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 your end around biases and the ways to mitigate these biases, whether it's an algorithmic approach or or a human in the loop one. Yeah, just uh, like reframe a little bit what Thomas was saying. I think there's mm. this uh, this tendency to go, come with the, like the really flashy, like seamless kind of AI model that can do everything. Um, and I think, you know, what Thomas was saying is like, you don't need that to be super, you know, like a, you can kind of open it up a little bit, right? Like you can uh, show the different pieces of it. You can make it a little bit messier, a little bit um, more open to folks. Um, and so not try to generate like the perfect response, but like showcase the different kind of potential responses and things like that. And I think that goes a long way um, to helping folks kind of understand what's going on and, and pick what is actually valuable out of these models as opposed to, yeah, that. So I think there's that piece to it that I think a lot about um, you know, I added another piece, but it's it's leaving my mind now, so I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let me just ask my last question, which was for you, Isaac, and then um, if I may ask Tillman to ask their question for Thomas, uh, because it is a long question, um, and I'm very jet lagged. So first, Isaac. So because of all these reasons, should Wikimedia build their own AI data sets and models? Yeah, we well, we already do. I think that's like the quick response okay, to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think what you're asking is not the because like vandalism text and things like that, we've been doing it for many years and not really okay. asking about that. I think you're asking uh -huh. like large language models. Um, and there, you know, I think, uh, well, first I'll say like, it's not a decided question, right? Like this, these are the sorts of discussions that we're having now in uh -huh. the community. Um, uh -huh. but I think one of the approaches that does feel very promising in this space are work like the Big Science Project, where you know, in collaboration with folks who have, um, you know, much larger collaborations of folks who are dedicated to doing this in the open and doing it with ethics um, in mind. I think there's a lot of potential there. Uh, to be building large, you know, models that do fit better to our principles and take some of these concerns to heart about biases um, and harms that these models can can output. Um, and so, yeah, big science. I know they you know uh, just went through big code, which was a code generation model that was in a similar mm -hmm. vein, um, and we're excited about that because. Um, for instance, I know like Sparkle query generation is a big challenge for many Wikidata folks. And there's hopes of maybe uh, being able to take some of the big code stuff no. and apply it to that problem. So Sparkle you know. is beautiful. It's a beautiful <laughs> language. Beautifully messy. Yes. Uh, so um, um, before I get too excited about it, uh, Lydia is agreeing with me. That's nice. Tillman, would you want to ask your question for, for Thomas about yeah. framing of it, creating a disconnect between, yeah, is that okay? Yeah, I had audio issues earlier, so I apologize. So my question is about, um, so I liked your framing about this disconnect 
that AI creates right between the um, creators and consumers of knowledge. And that's obviously what we Wikipedians have been worrying about a lot as well. Um, <clears throat> but the current frame is more like from, we see a lot of uh, concern about copyright and said, right? So creators want to get paid or they want to opt out of, tra of training data, even though it's currently fair use, right? At least in the US. And so there's a worry that this, uh, there'll be this AI backlash with new laws that actually expands copyright a lot, right? In the direction of corporate maximalism. And that's like directly counter to the Wikimedia vision, right? Where we want to make all that accessible and it's going the other direction, right? Like pay us for that and this. So I'm just curious how you are, you know, you're attacking face got a lot of this discussion. So I'm just curious how you see it's developing. And especially if you see the consumers of knowledge also get a voice, not just the creators and the corporate industry. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. And uh it's funny because before creating Hugging Face, I was an intel, intellectual property author, attorney. So I was actually very much in favor of kind of copyright or at least protecting creators. And at Hugging Face, I'm, I'm really doing something very different, pushing op open source, which is very much the negation of this. Um, I, I think in general, uh, seeing an expansion of copyright would probably be be damaging, I think. Uh, and and that we, we, we hopefully don't want to go there maybe the reason i'm talking about that is that be, behind um or beyond uh, beyond just uh copyright i think but that's interesting because maybe it's less the case for wikipedia but in many communities and like I, I see that credits is still something quite important you don't you don't really need or want monetary rewards for what you what you share but when you spend a lot of time on creating something you, you would like to have your name somewhere associated or maybe even your anonymous name but kind of you know this idea of uh, uh, being still linked to your creation is, is quite an important incentives i think for people to share something that they spend time to work on and so and so i'm i'm kind of worried that if we lose these incentives um we have a lot less people sharing knowledge openly on the internet basically so that's, that's kind of what, what i'm worried at the moment um but then you don't want to go in the full full in direction where right you can't reuse anything that people have been saying or like you don't want an extension to crazy extension of copyright so i it's quite complex and the problem with uh, AI model is that they also often don't copy verbatim, but they change, you know, some steps. So it's never a direct copy. And so you're in this very blurry, um, this very blurry area where it's not verbatim copy, but it's still definitely inspired by the, the training data. But yeah, I, I don't have a really an answer. I, I think it's interesting that you're saying that because uh, that's, that's a good point. Uh, and that would be also... Uh, an unfortunate um i think with the development of ai system and this like in just a matter of few months this huge transition from like this very kind of niche or still quite niche uh, research area to something that everybody is using um we have a we have a kind of a, a number of dangerous things that could that could arise and one of them could be all this community kind of closing them their doors basically and saying we don't want to share stuff anymore so that would be quite unfortunate you know just like after chat bpt every every place uh, like this like i don't know stack overflow or reddit or wikipedia a place where people were free free discussing would just close their door that would be very very bad another bad outcome could be indeed that like copyright become like uh, much larger as a reaction mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, we'll see what happens. But yes, uh, I suppose there's a few ongoing cases that will give some insight into the direction of travel into into that. Um, we are reaching the end of the hour, so that means that sadly, um, I will have to ask um, our panelists to come to their closing statements. Um, so I'm going to ask um, Isaac first, and then. Thomas, I'll get back to you. Final statement, short. 
Yeah, I don't think I have anything particularly momentous to say at the end, just to say that, you know, we're in a change of a uh, time of a lot of change. And so these sorts of discussions, I think, are incredibly important. And I'm hoping that we can continue to have them um, so we can be hearing folks' concerns and questions and hearing the different points of view about what directions these should be going. And so I'm, I'm very thankful for this panel and hope to have more in this style or in other styles, uh, you know, moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting to actually look at these questions and the answers that we have provided in three, six or 12 months and see how, how our, our knowledge has, has evolved. Thomas, about you, how about your final statement? Yeah, I wanted to thank you. Uh, I will, uh, I will uh, read all the document that was super interesting. I think all of these questions, uh, they can raise new, 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 new ID, new potential project, new things we could mm -hmm. do to go in, in better direction. So um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very... I'm very thankful for, for everyone to participate in, the, in this debate. And yeah, just like Isaac said, I think it's important that you people don't hesitate to voice their idea, their opinion, what they think could be done. Um, and if you have some interesting, you know, project collaboration, you can you can reach out to, to me or to Hugging Face. We like to push these things. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Um, Say. So... Uh, we had lots of interesting questions and discussions in, in the document and in the chats here as well. So thank you to everyone who has participated. And unfortunately, um, we, we couldn't answer all questions, but maybe I could ask um, our two panelists to have a look at the document and, and, and answer the remaining questions. Um, and also perhaps go through the, the, the comments in the chat that we um, didn't have time to, to, to address in, in, in greater depth. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'd love to watch this recording, as I said, in three, six or 12 months and see how um, our thinking has, has, has evolved, how naive um, or, or, or perhaps overly pessimistic um, we were. Um, but I think we all agree that um, these two communities um, have changed the world in, 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 in different ways. Um, and any ways in which they could come closer and collaborate and learn from each other will benefit not just um, uh, them directly, but also society at large. Thank you so much for the discussions, for your comments, um, and for um, giving me the opportunity to moderate this panel. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Bob. Thank you. Thanks also from my side. Really, really interesting discussion. Thanks a lot.